the entrance antiphon for the 24th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Give peace, O Lord, to those who wait for you, that your prophets may be found true. Hear the prayers of your servant and of your people, Israel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. As we gather together on this beautiful day, we recall those times in our lives we have failed to be the people we wish to be. We have needed the Lord to stand beside us and to heal us. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have gravely sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And we say together, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, that we may feel the working of your mercy. Grant that we may serve you with all of our hearts. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is taken from the book of Sirach. The author of Sirach writes thus, Wrath and anger are hateful things, yet the sinner hugs them tight. The vengeful will suffer the Lord's vengeance, for he remembers their sin in detail. Forgive your neighbor's injustice, then when you pray, your own sins will be forgiven you. Could anyone nourish anger against another and expect the healing from the Lord? Could anyone refuse mercy to another like himself? Can he seek pardon for his own sins? If one who has but flesh cherishes wrath, who will forgive his sins? Remember your last days, set enemy aside. Remember death and decay, cease from sin. Think of the commandments, hate not your neighbor. Remember the Most High, covenant and overlook faults. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Responsorial Psalm. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger, and rich in compassion. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger, and rich in compassion. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger, and rich in compassion. He pardons all of your inequities, heals your lips. He redeems your life from destruction, crowns you with kindness and compassion. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. He will not always chide, nor does he keep his wrath forever. Not according to our sins does he deal with us, but he does requite us according to our crimes. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing is the kindness towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so may put our transgressions from us. The Lord is kind and merciful, of anger, and rich in compassion. Our second reading is taken from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. And Paul writes thus, Brothers and sisters, none of us lives for oneself, 
and one does not die once for his own self. For if we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. So then whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For this is why Christ died and came to life, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. I give you a new commandment, says the Lord. Love one another as I have loved you. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to the Lord. Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive him? As many as seven times? Jesus answered and said, You not seven times, but seventy-seven times. That is why the kingdom of heaven may liken unto a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the accounting, the debtor was brought before him, owed him a large amount, since he had no way paying it back. His master ordered him to be sold along with his wife and his children and all of his property in payment of the debt. For that servant fell down and did it homage and said, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back in full. Move with compassion, the master of that servant let him go and forgave him the loan. And when the servant had left, he found the one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him and started to choke him, demanding, Pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had the fellow servant put into prison until he paid the debt. And when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed and went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you the entire debt because you begged me. Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant as I have had pity upon you? Then in anger, his master handed him over to the torturers until he would pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly Father do to you, unless each of you forgives your brother from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We uh, see Peter asking questions again in today's Gospel. And as we read Peter's various questions throughout time, they usually have a purpose other than what's apparent. I don't think uh, Peter was just inquiring for the fun of it. Uh, Peter obviously was irritated with someone, and he wanted to impress the Lord. So he says, Lord, am I expected to forgive these guys seven times? And as the usual, Peter doesn't get it. The Lord says to him, no, 77 times. Now, what is that? That's an infinite number in the in the Old Testament. What the Lord is saying is, we are required to always forgive. Now, will we do that perfectly? No. But we need to be attentive to forgiveness and how we handle it. I often think that God, in his search for our salvation, is sort of like that little carrot you put in front of a donkey to get him to keep going forward. He sees the carrot, but he can never quite reach it. Now, the Lord isn't giving out carrots, but he's put, giving out spiritual challenges. And they'll never be met. But it is in the striving for them that he judges us. Whether we are trying is the way he judges us. Will we ever reach perfection? No. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't try. That doesn't mean we shouldn't do the best we can, especially when it deals with forgiveness. You know, um, forgiveness of a stranger is relatively easy, all things considered. Forgiveness of a family member, forgiveness of a friend, forgiveness of someone we have known, maybe even a spouse, those are the hard times because it's more than likely that they have hurt us more than any stranger ever will. Of course, when you put the shoe on the other foot, we have hurt them more than any stranger ever could. So God is challenging each one of us today to take a deep look, starting in the hard places with our own families, 
and ask the question, is there someone I need to forgive? Is there someone that I need to seek forgiveness from? Now, I'm not telling you that the person you forgive will accept it. And I'm telling you the person you seek forgiveness from will grant it. We don't have any control over that. What we do have control over is ourselves. And God gives us the special grace to look and to seek for forgiveness. You know, uh, our congregation today, Monsignor Alice sitting out there, and I think he would tell you what I'm about to tell you is true. I'd say in maybe one out of 20 funerals that I do, the family is sitting in front of me, divided on both sides of the church, sort of like the Hatfields and the McCoys. And there is mom in a casket in the middle. And yet, even in those circumstances, you can feel the hostility. You can feel, you can feel the desire to get even. That's scary. That's scary. How many of our parents, we sometimes call them, at least when I was younger, interfering, try to get us to understand that. Try to get us to change. So we are challenged today to change. Now let's remember what forgiveness is, however. Forgiveness is not going Oh joy, oh joy, I love the way you hurt me. No. That's some kind of severe depression, I would think. Rather, it is giving up the desire to get even. Forgiving means letting go. Now, forgiveness does not mean endangering ourselves. You come at me with a car three times, I forgive you for the three times. But I'm going to go to the police and report your driving, because you're going to kill somebody sooner or later. That's separate from forgiveness. So pick out a member of the family, maybe not the hardest one to seek forgiveness from, maybe one of the tweeners, and ask for forgiveness. And maybe pick out one of the tweeners and grant forgiveness. And a funny thing happens, like anything else in life, if we practice it, if we stick with it, our spiritual muscles grow and we can change the world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. We present to the Lord our joys, our tribulations, and our petitions. We pray for Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, that they may lead the people of God in peace and love. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick in mind or body this day, but especially for those who are isolated in their own homes during this COVID crisis, that the Lord will be the, with them in this their time of trial, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those intentions which we hold in the deepest recesses of our hearts, that they may be worthy of the risen Christ, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And finally, we pray for all those who have died, but especially on today for our deceased parents and grandparents. And we say the old prayer together, eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. And we recite together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he arose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we've received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the, the Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands to the, the praise and glory of his name for our Lord good and the good of all his holy church. Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these, your servants' offerings, that what each has offered in honor of your name may serve the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Let us give thanks. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, and eternal God. For in you, in you we live and move and have our being. And while this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of eternal life. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, and with joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Edward, our Bishop, and all the clergy and people of God. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all those who died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy upon us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to our neighbors some sign of the Lord's peace. Lamb of God, you take Amen. away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to shut under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us stand and pray. The communion antiphon, how precious your mercy, O God, the children and men seek shelter in the shadow of your wings. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies so that it affects not our own desires, but may always prevail in us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go forth in the peace and love of our risen Savior. Our Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. And you all have a great day.